Well, no stranger to Bison Sports, successful alumni. Amanda Wong is our guest today on the beginning of our alumni series. And Amanda, you've done quite a few neat things since finishing your time as a Bison student athlete with the soccer program. You just finished med school and you're doing residency. So welcome to this. Welcome here, first of all. And second of all, how has it been finishing med school and now being in the next stage of advancing to becoming a doctor? Yeah, well, thanks for having me. It's so great to be back and getting to chat with you today. Um, since finishing soccer, med school has been a whole journey. I just recently finished med school a couple of months ago, and now I'm doing my residency. Med school was interesting in many ways to say the least you know two years of COVID in right in the middle of my med school was uh an adjustment that needed to be made and uh interesting adventure throughout the adventure that is medical school but it was it was a fantastic four years and I learned so much and I'm very grateful for this journey so you played for the Manitoba Bisons we played women's soccer and what I wanted to ask you is what was, what were some of the things that impacted you in your personal and professional life that were a direct result of being a part of the women's soccer program at U of M? Yeah, well, I think the women's soccer program at U of M gave me a lot of life skills that have been useful in my journey throughout medical school. One of the biggest ones, I think, was the leadership skills that I gained throughout the soccer program. You know, being team captain for a couple of years, I was used to leading a team and leading a, a large group of people. And so now I've been able to kind of take that to my medical school journey and do various councils and leadership roles and um Bison soccer as well is very involved with giving back to the community. And that, you know, is obviously a large part of being a physician and being a doctor. So that gave me a lot of foundational skills for how to give back to the community, how to interact with community members and to kind of best adjust what, uh, what they need. When you started playing soccer at U of M, did you know that you ultimately wanted to be on a path towards becoming a doctor? Or how did that unfold over the course of your university career? I think going into university, I was pretty confident that I wanted to be a doctor at the end of my schooling journey. But, you know, throughout the five years I was with the Bison soccer team, all the experiences we had, you know, even personal experience with injury and tearing my ACL in my second year, that just reinforced um, that I want to be on the other side of things, on the medical side of things, and being able to give back to people and help, uh, you know, young athletes or non-athletes and some of the other populations um, with their health and different medical things and give back to the community in that sense. So how do you... So in the present day, since it's been, when was it, when did you last finish playing? What was your last year playing? Sorry, I have to think about this. Um, my last season would have been the 2018, 2019 season. So it's almost been, I think, or going on five years now since you last played basically the same amount of time that you would have spent as a member of the team. What are some of the things that you miss the most about being a part of the program? You know, I miss the camaraderie of the soccer team the most. Getting to see some of your best friends for hours on end every single day was something that's so unique and so special about being on a team. And once you leave the team, you don't always get that. And even still being able to be in touch with some of the teammates that I had during my Bison's career is something so special, making those friendships that are going to last many, many years down the road. Um, yeah. <laughs> So in the, in the time that you've been in med school, you've had a bit of a crazy journey with doing it partially during COVID and, and having that motivation on the other side of having suffered major injuries. So what is, what would you say is your philosophy with how you approach your practice before, I guess, before you officially become a doctor, but the philosophy that you've carried forth with you through school and now in residency? Um. 
I mean, I'm now working on my family medicine residency. So this kind of means I'll be working as a family doctor once I graduate the residency program. And I think my experience in as a as a soccer player and as a um recipient of medical care throughout my injury has made me want to be a doctor that is really patient focused and patient centered, listening to the patient's point of view and their perspective and helping them to achieve their goals, whether it be physical goals in terms of playing sports or just goals as to how they want to feel and how they want to go about their life and the things they want to achieve. What's the thing that you've enjoyed the most about the residents? Right. Is it What's the thing that you've enjoyed the most about doing your residency program so far? So far, the thing I've enjoyed most about the residency program is a little bit of the independence now that we get. You know, as a medical student doing rotations throughout the hospital, you're pretty closely observed and somebody's always keeping an eye on you. But now completing four years of medical school and going into residency, there's a little bit more trust that the um the senior doctors have in us and so they kind of allow us to do some things on our own including you know procedures delivering babies things like that so I think some of that is actually really cool and really special and unique do you know of or have any mentors who came before you that were student athletes who eventually ended up in med school yeah, so Amir Ali, he played for the men's basketball team and graduated from the basketball team a couple years ahead of me. He actually went into medical school as well and was a couple years ahead of me. When I was going through my application and my interview process for the medical school applications, I actually met up with him and chatted with him a few times and just bounced some ideas off him, got some advice. And so I think he was a really important um an important mentor and a role model in terms of, you know, somebody that comes from an athletic background and buys in sports, how much they can achieve in the classroom and in a medical field as well. What advice would you pass on to other student athletes who hope to one day go down the same path or a similar path as yourself into med school? I would say to work hard and it is definitely something that is achievable you know, there's going to be long hours of studying, but the time management that playing for university sports teaches you throughout your career as an athlete are skills that are really valuable going into medical school where you're going to have to be able to manage your time quite well in terms of studying and, you know, other things going on in life, whether it be continuing with sports or exercise or other hobbies. Um, that'll be important to keep, you know, your mind and body well throughout the journey of medical school. So who are some of the people who were your biggest mentors when you played soccer for the U of M? Um, one of the big mentors I had in my journey with the U of M Bisons was Chloe Worley. When I started with the Bison soccer program, she had, I think, two years left. She had also actually just suffered a severe injury when I joined the team. She had injured her back and was unable to play for that year. So she was not only a role model because she was in a leadership position being team captain, but also a role model for me in how to still be a leader on the team, even if you're injured and not physically present on the field during the games. And I thought those skills were really valuable for me when I did experience my injury as well. And of course, Chloe has done big things in her soccer career. She's now working with Team Canada and has gone to the World Cup and is doing so amazing. And so she's been such a strong role model for me. And I, I always have really looked up to her. That's incredible. It's always great to have people who can support you and know what it's like to be in your shoes, especially those that have come before you. Mm -hmm, for sure. <laughs> so now that you've finished your playing career, what is your relationship with soccer and physical activity? How has it evolved maybe as you've gone on to med school, knowing that you're no longer a part of a university team, but you still do have that background in playing high level sports and being active and now being in the healthcare field? You know, I like to stay involved in soccer in many different ways. I still obviously enjoy going out and watching the Bison soccer 
game uh, home games when they're here. Many of the girls on the team right now, I actually coached when they were many years younger. So it's fun seeing them, you know, how they developed from being 14 years old now to being top players on the university team that I used to play for as well. Um, soccer has been a big part of my life for many years, so it's not something I'm, uh, or it, it's something that I want to, you know, keep in my life for as long as I possibly can. So I'm still playing on a couple teams now in the women's league and in some co-ed leagues as well. One or two games a week is, is still something that, um, I'm trying to do throughout the year, indoor and outdoor, it gives me opportunity to see some of my friends from Bison Soccer, as well as you just get a get a break from the medical field and studying and books. Physical activity is so good for the body and mind, and it's really helped keep me balanced throughout all these years of studying and medical school. So I, I hope to keep playing soccer as long as I can, that's for sure. You're 100 percent right. Being able to take care of your body and mind with playing a sport is so huge and it doesn't necessarily have to come in the form of being on a university team or a professional team or anything like that. Yeah, for sure. You know, there's high level competition like there was in the university sports, but sometimes it's nice just having some more casual playing, have some fun with it and see your friends and not always have to take it so seriously. <laughs> Are there any specific plays or moments in the field that stick out to you over the span of your career? I think probably the goal that I scored at U Sports Nationals in the one game we won, it was the first goal that we had scored in the tournament and first time Bisons had attended nationals. So the first time Bisons scored at a nationals tournament, um, just being in that home field with so many spectators was such, such a special moment. It was awesome. It's probably one that you maybe still think of to this day. I could only imagine what it would be like being able to write your name in the history books for the women's soccer program. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> well, before we wrap our time today, I want to do a few more questions to have a little bit more fun. And then, uh, and then that'll be it for today. Sounds good. Favorite soccer movie? Ben to like Beckham. Oh, or kicking and screaming. I don't know. That one's pretty good too. <laughs> it's that's it's definitely a tough one. I, I won't I won't give you too much flag there. <laughs> um favorite favorite soccer player ever? Probably Lionel Messi. I have always looked up to his free kicks and they've always been something that I've tried to achieve and just never quite was able to. So seeing him win the world cup so recently was pretty awesome. Uh, well, I mean, maybe that's one of them, but I was going to ask favorite memory watching a soccer game. The women's Olympic gold medal game. That was awesome. Worth getting up early for, for sure. That was definitely a super iconic moment. That was uh, that was so tremendous and exciting. Yeah, absolutely. And um, if you could visit any single stadium and watch any club team or international team play in person, which team would you watch and where and why? Oh, gosh. That is a big question. For club, Okay, for club and international there, because sometimes it's hard to compare the two. Yeah, no particular stadium, no particular team, but just a World Cup final anywhere, realistically. <laughs> you can you can never go wrong with watching a World Cup final, I think. This is true. Well, Amanda, thanks for your time on today's... Uh, thanks for your time on today's episode. It was fantastic getting to chat and getting to throw it back a little bit to your time with the Bosons and, and I want to acknowledge you for all the success that you've been experiencing in your professional life and wish you much continued success as you go forth in your journey in med school. Well, thank you so much for having me. It was great chatting.